this little bit of paper is worth about £10. If I gave it to you, you'd probably get a little bit happier. What if I gave everybody in the country a £10 note? Would we all get happier? Well, in the 1970s, an economist by the name of Richard Easterlin asked himself this same question and found that, for the most part, no. Even though at any moment in time, richer people are generally happier than poorer people, as a country gets richer as a whole, it doesn't seem to bring about a corresponding change in happiness. This idea is called the Easterlin Paradox. But it got me thinking, wouldn't it be nice if there was a kind of equation for happiness? Something that would tell us all the different variables that contribute and let you know which metric you need to improve on in your life to get a little bit happier. That would be handy, right? Well, lucky for me, I'm not the first person to have had this idea. In the late 90s, two psychologists by the name of Barbara Fredrickson and Marcial Lasada had a similar idea. Could they create a mathematical model that would determine what people needed in their lives to be happy? They built a mathematical model using nonlinear dynamics. It's a kind of analysis that is used in studying waves and electricity and all sorts of different things. And they came up with this magic number, 2.9013. This number apparently explains everything you need to be happy. The conclusion that they reached after this mathematical analysis was that if for every negative emotion you felt at least 2.9013 positive emotions, then you'd be guaranteed to flourish and be a happy person. So it seems like the job done, right? Just need to feel 2.9013 positive emotions for every negative one. Easy peasy. Let's call it there. Okay, no, so if it sounds a bit too simple to be true, that's because it is, and this idea has been pretty widely discredited. A lot of the maths that they use was pretty spurious, and there's a pretty cool story of a graduate student who set out to disprove this, despite only having about a month's worth of formal psychology training. And it's no surprise that they couldn't summarize it as a single number. Happiness isn't really a single thing. Even at a really, really high level, we can split it into two kinds of ideas, I think. Momentary happiness and life satisfaction. When it comes to momentary happiness, the maths is pretty conclusive on that front. For example, one model describes it as depending on two things, the scale of the rewards we receive and the difference between what we expect and what we do actually get in the end, a term that psychologists call the reward prediction error. But for most of us, that's not what we're interested in. I'm sure you have a pretty good idea of the kind of things that would give you a burst of instant gratification. It's not the hardest thing in the world to get in 2022. What is a lot more difficult, however, is lifelong satisfaction. Getting that feeling that the future is going to be bright and that you've lived your life how you felt like you should have. But not all hope is lost, okay? And the answer might lie in the work of this guy. Okay, so who is he, you may ask? Okay, so Robert Waldinger is the director of something called the Harvard Study of Adult Development. It's the psychological study that's been running for over 80 years. It started in 1938, 1938, before World War II. And it's followed the lives of over 700 men as they've gone from children, some of which were literally living in slums and the poorest parts of Boston, into adulthood and old age. And throughout the study gave them questionnaires, medical exams, even blood tests to figure out what exactly are the factors that lead to a happy and fulfilled life. The study is actually still going on and they're now interviewing the children of the original participants over eight years later. And they came up with an answer, but the answer wasn't a complicated mathematical equation or a single number which supposedly determines someone's life satisfaction. Rather, the answer came down to one word, really. Relationships. Whether you're rich or poor, famous or unknown, none of that mattered quite as much as the quality of your close relationships. Your relationships with your family, your friends and your loved ones, they're king. They affected how long people lived, they affected how healthy people were, and they even affected how intelligent you were in old age. People with more tight-knit, stronger social relationships live longer and are literally smarter. It doesn't take an algorithm or a PhD in maths to figure out what the equation for happiness really is. It's that one word. Relationships. And this maybe helps to explain to some extent why the Easterlin paradox exists, why we're not getting happier even as we get richer as countries. Money can buy a lot of things. It pays for rent and food and 
it helps us stay out of debt and things like that. But the one thing it can't buy is quality relationships. It can't buy meaningful social connections and it can't buy a close tight knit social circle. No matter how much money you have, you can't buy the one thing you truly need to feel life satisfaction, to feel that sense of optimism for the future and that sense of pride in your past. And implicitly, I think a lot of us already know this, but the truth is it's very difficult to live in a world that tells you that happiness is something that you have to either buy or go out and seek rather than the truth. It's something that we all create. So if you've made it this far, I want you to just do me one little favor, okay? Just, just, just one. Pick up your phone and just call somebody that you care about, okay? Somebody you haven't spoken to in a while, somebody that you'd like to hear from. Don't, don't text them, don't, don't do that. It's not the same, okay? Just, just call them and hear their voice because the reality is happiness isn't this unattainable idea that's out in the void that we have to go and seek. It might just be a phone call away.